Uh, it's great to be in the Christmas season, and uh, I take it we still are. I still am anyway. I'm enjoying every minute of it, just celebrating the fact that Jesus has been born to us. But let's pray, shall we, before we go any further. Thank you, Father God. We pray because, or I pray because I want you to bless this next few minutes with us, as you have blessed the uh, service gone before. Thank you for each one who has taken part, and with our ears we are taking part in it. I pray that you'll open our hearts and our minds, our ears to hear good things from you, eyes to see all those wonderful things you have for us in Jesus Christ. And in his name I pray. Amen. And the first reading, by the way, is from Matthew chapter chapter 1. So if you've got the Bible, you'd like to open at that point. I've got a couple of cards here, the usual prayer cards. We used to get these done, Joan and I, when we were off the Lebanon years ago. We don't have to do that now, but we enjoy other people's uh, mug shots. There's Tom and Gemma Meeks. And uh, I've already emailed you this morning their street address. But if you're heading north from Atherton and you want to go to Paranda or Cairns, as you're heading into Marina, you just take that right turn and look over your right shoulder and that's you probably be able to wave to the mix as you drive by. Uh, that's where they are, Bonland Street. Also I've got a card here from Danny Allen, but Danny was here on uh, Christmas Carols night anyway, and he's uh, saying that he's appreciated the support from the Rayfield, uh, from Public Children's Home. So I'll leave you that one up back there to look at as well. Uh, what else? I wanted to say thank you to Carolyn, but she's gone, and the uh, team. Oh, yes, yeah, you're here. Yeah, she's looking around, she couldn't see you anywhere. Uh, She's <laughs> lost a lot of weight, I know. Thank you for the Carol's Night, by the way. A sterling enterprise again. You mentioned Carol, and you've got to mention the rest, but I won't mention them all by name. I think Michael's already done a good job of thanking you all. Uh, everything from catering up the back to music down the front. Thank you, it was great. Uh, now, I've got yes, a folder here before we go any further. Lots of things to hand out because this is the end of the month. And we're supposed to stay back and pray. But I think we might not do that. Instead, we might consider doing that next week because I'm back again. Ron is away one more week, I think, after this. So, bless him in Tasmania and in Sydney, wherever he goes. Uh, but we might have a prayer next week because I'm looking at 2020 vision and that will include a prayer regime for each one of us here at Living Hope. We all need to be prayers. If we're not prayers, we probably need converting. All right? Fair enough? So, on the front of this are the prayer points that I've uh, put out for the next few weeks. You can use them all year for that matter. Pray for the church leadership and our management committee. Let's pray about our, the, the, the yeah, preaching of the word and the, the worship we enjoy here every Sunday and during the week in Bible studies. Pray for our data team and our worship leaders. And then I've got under evangelism, every member of the church is a missionary. Our personal witness for Christ is vital. If we don't live Christ and sometimes even speak Christ, the world will never know, will they? So let's pray about our witness to Christ. We need to be praying for our neighbours, our friends, our relatives. And then I've got other things like the food handle ministry. Uh, all right. Well, I could be getting people to hand these out. Thanks, Darren. While I'm jabbering on here, and we haven't even come to the uh, sermon time yet, so that's start your timer down just yet. But as you get these, you'll see on the other side, for those who do go to sleep while I'm jabbering on, there's the outline of the message for this morning. We're going to be gold digging today. And uh, thanks, Michael, for uh, suggesting that last week. You didn't suggest it in so many words, but you spoke about the gifts that the wise men, so-called wise men, uh, brought. 
Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Well, I'm uh, settling on the gold bit. Frankincense and myrrh, well, they've all got symbolism, association uh, with the significance of the coming of Christ. But I won't go into that just now. We'll settle with gold. Oh, by the way, anybody know of any one by the name of Rudolph? Yeah, well, Rudolph, at this time of year, we hear a lot about the pagan Christmas, don't we? Of uh, Santa Claus and his reindeers, and Rudolph is probably the best known one of them all, but I was reading the other day, here's a, uh, a bad joke, with it sleep. He apparently got a bad report from school, especially in history. I was reading that he went down in history. <laughs> and one more, one more. Well, you shouldn't pick on all the kids who are still believing in Santa Claus, you know. I know adults who still believe Ford's a good car. <laughs> Oops. Can I keep going? Don't throw those passion fruit. <laughs> uh, tomatoes I would prefer. Uh, speaking of Christmas, however, the story really disturbs me. Have you thought about the Christmas story? God is supposed to be a sovereign God who's supposed to be going before us, mapping out the course of our lives, and yet you read the Christmas story, and it seems that he was nowhere to be seen, except when he sent the angel to uh, give the news to Mary that she was going to have a child. The timing was all wrong. I mean, she was going to be eight months pregnant, and she was going to have to go off to Bethlehem to enroll in the census. I mean, where was God in that? Wasn't he thinking? If, he would, if God was a woman, he would have thought about those sorts of things, wouldn't he? Well, it doesn't look good, does it, on the face of it? Uh, I've got some other suggestions here about, well, the arduous journey, not just for Mary, but also Joseph. And it was a journey, it's probably from here to, what, Gibby? I haven't looked at the map again lately to see. It was a fair journey. No paved roads, no McDonald's every 20 k's, none of that. And in fact, there were, there were, uh, well, robbers along the way too. It was a pretty hair-raising journey. And then for a woman eight months pregnant or maybe even closer to nine by now. Then she got there. They got there and there was no room for them. Where was God? What? You would have thought that God would have planned ahead, wouldn't you? He would have had a place for them to stay when they got there. And he didn't. And then there was Herod out to get them. And so on, the story goes on. Well, I think of that in terms of the Exodus story too, with Moses. Uh, you know, they got, Moses got them out into the wilderness, all right, two million of them, and then they were thirsty. There was no water provided. I mean, if I was the general of the army and that happened, I'd be talking to the general and no one would be a private. <laughs> But uh, you're supposed to look after your, uh, your people, but uh, they ran out of water. And the people started grumbling. What were they supposed to do? Well, of course, we fall into that habit, that trap sometimes too. We tend to be grumblers. When things are not going well, we grumble and moan and worry. But I think what God is suggesting as we read the book of Exodus, and as we see, in the Christmas story too. We're supposed to talk to God about all of these things, aren't we? When things are not going well, when things are definitely bear shape, we need to be talking to God and asking Him if He will please provide something. We are desperate, Lord. Can't you see? Help us. We need to get desperate in our brain at uh, times like that. And I am consoled and I resort often to this memory verse that I as a new Christian learned. And I trust that everybody in this room will have learned it. If you haven't, jot it down now so that when you get home you can memorize it. And 
it is Romans 8, 28. Would somebody like to suggest what Romans 8, 28 says? Well, now I'm putting you on the spot. Let me tell you. Uh, all things work out for good for those who love God and are called according to His purposes. All things work out for good for those who love God. And it would have worked out very well for Israel at the Exodus. But because they didn't take the hint and learn to live by faith and to live by trust in God, a journey that should have taken them mere days took them 40 years. I wonder how many twists and turns we've made unnecessarily because we haven't been trusting God as we ought to with the pear-shaped circumstances of our lives. Well, <clears throat> in the midst of all this, we need to seek out gold. We need to seek out gold. And searching for gold can be quite a tedious task. An exacting task. You've got to have the tools. You've got to know where to go. Well, of course, we know the answer to that straight away. If you want gold? Go to God. He's the best provider of God, of gold. Well, that's my analogy this morning, if you like. Seek out God. Well, wise men did, didn't they? And wise men still seek out God. They brought those very appropriate gifts, quite uh, apart from what I was hearing recently, if it was, a, if it was women who brought the gifts, they would have brought practical gifts, like mappies. Well, I think we saw it in the video, didn't we? Mappies and things like that. Well, the wise men probably were inspired indeed by God as they followed the star and brought their gifts, which were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. By the way, those wise men, Michael didn't explain that last week, and you didn't have to because we've been at Christmas many, many years. So we should know what all these strange words mean. Magi? What are magi? Well, then literally, well, we get the word magician from this word magi, this Greek word, magician. And that's what they were, sorcerers. <coughs> well, <coughs> in certain contexts they were anyway. And I've got a couple of references, like in Acts chapter 13, they were sorcerers. Uh, but uh, in ancient Persian culture, they were the learned people. They studied the stars, they studied science. They were wise men indeed. And we ought to be as well. And uh, as wise people, I'm suggesting just three things, and then I'll sit down and we can enjoy the, the uh, cup of tea at the back. Wise men bring gold, gifts of gold to God. And that's the first point on the back of your bookmark there. Bring God gold. In other words, bring Him the best you've got. And that gold is a short word. If you read the book of Revelation, you see a list of all the precious stones. Uh, some of them are bits of tongue twisters, but gold is quite easy to roll off the tongue, isn't it? So let's bring God gold. And uh, I suggest that it is the most precious of precious stones. Let's bring God the best that we've got. All right, it's in Matthew chapter 1. I asked you to turn to that, so I'll read it. After coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell to the ground and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they presented him the gifts of gold. Frankincense and myrrh. All right, the next reading and the next suggestion as we go into our New Year resolutions, I suppose. Oh, I don't like to call them New Year resolutions because if you're like me, they don't last very long, do they? Now keep this bookmark handy and uh, maybe as the year goes on, we'll remind you of at least these three uh, New Year's resolutions, if you like. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12, says this, Each man, oh, wait on, we've well, go back a couple of verses. Verse 11, No man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. 
that we build our lives around Jesus, if we don't build our lives around Jesus, we are fooling ourselves. Life doesn't have much meaning and purpose in the long run. And in fact, it comes to a very sticky end, as Israel Palau would remind the nation, we need to repent and lay a foundation on the foundation stone, Jesus Christ himself. Now, if any man builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay or straw, each man's work will be evident. The day will show it because it's to be revealed with fire and fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. Yes, we do face judgment. I think it's, uh, well, what is that word that Neil would be able to remind me of? The Bema, thank you. The Bema, see, is the judgment of God's people on the day, uh, on the last day. Uh, we should be investing, we should be building with gold. In other words, we should be serving God wholeheartedly. And if we're not, well, today is the 29th of December, and in a couple more days is the new year. Let's start fresh and building where we should be building. Um, focusing our lives and serving uh, uh, with our lives Jesus wholeheartedly. Let's make sure that we're building upon a foundation with gold or maybe silver or maybe precious stones but let's forget the wood hay and stubble bit. Let's do our best. Let's uh, serve God with our whole hearts. And Lastly, Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. I've got it here somewhere. I don't think it's missing from my Bible. No, here it is. It's talking to the church at Laodicea. He says, I'm advising you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich and black garments so that you may clothe yourself and the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed. And finally, I sell to anoint your eyes so that you may see. The significance in those three, if you look at the history of Laodicea and some of the, the uh, produce, some of the commerce that was going on there, but in the first instance, we need to buy, or we're advised anyway, to buy gold tried in the fire. That we may be rich. Want to be rich? Well, of course we all do. Let's make sure that it is in Christ, in God, in heavenly things that we are rich. Because that's the best place to invest our future. Don't be absorbed by worldly investments, by even your workaday world. We work our hearts off. Use mm -hmm. the expression. Uh, because we want money in the bank. We want to be able to afford things. Uh, but I think it's in John chapter 5 that we're exhorted to uh, seek the best things. Don't work for food that perishes, but work for food that lasts for eternal life. So, as a number one priority, let's be absorbed by God. Let's buy gold from Him. And then all these other things fall into place in their right perspective. I think it comes out in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 as well. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things you need in life will be given you as well. Things aren't going well for you at the moment? Things look a little bit pear shaped? Well, I would suggest that uh, if you think gold, for the rest of 2019 and then right through 2020, you might see things turning around. And let's face it, even if the circumstances remain pear-shaped, you will be equipped to deal with those pear-shaped circumstances. You will be uh, strengthened in your character, in your inner being. You will be able to face the circumstances that, that are thrown at you. That God allows you to face. Let's face it, 
we are in a fallen world, and uh, oh, I would like the Christmas story to be a little bit different, the Exodus story to be a little bit different too, that God would go before you and lay out a path of gold and make sure that there's McDonald's at the end of every day. Oh, well, what's your favorite restaurant? Yeah. But he doesn't. He allows bad things to happen to God's people. He allowed these awkward, hair-shaped, horrible things to happen to his own servant, Mary, pregnant with a baby and still having to make that journey to Bethlehem. But, uh, you know, the story ended well, didn't it? She got there. She delivered the baby. The baby grew up. Should have been killed. I mean, Herod was out to get him. But uh, because they had gold, they were able to afford the trip to Egypt where they lived for another, was it three years, I think? Something like that. And uh, then they came back and Jesus grew up to be the prophet of God, the, the priest of God, the king in the, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And he was able to minister to many people and then do what he came to do in the first place anyway. Die a horrible death to carry our sins forever. And so, by God, it's the best investment. I mean, serve God wholeheartedly and be absorbed with investment in God. Amen. Amen. That wasn't too hard there, was it? I mean, the preaching wasn't hard, but the message I hope you got.